Tiny little ice flow? Oh, leave the polar bear out of it for Christ's sake! But it breaks my heart! It's more complicated than that, Harry! What, and complicated is good? I'm just so sick of hearing about the goddamn polar bear! <laughs> Can we just please hear the other side? There's another side? Yes. There's always another side. Can we please? Can we all just calm down? Before we go rushing off into anything, um, new initiatives, programs, or God forbid, legislation, for God's sake, let's not lose our heads. This is not the time to panic. That's the important thing, that we don't panic. A calm, reasoned, measured response. Yes. I'd be very interested at this juncture, since we brought him in at what our accountant insists on referring to as a not negligible expense in hearing from our consultant. The consultant. Ah, the consultant. Sir, are you ready? Am I ready? <laughs> when have I ever not been ready? Ha <laughs> 
is how to begin. I think constantly of that character in The Plague by Albert Camus, the writer character who has been working on a novel for some time but can't quite get past the first sentence because he wants it to be perfect. And let me ask you this, is this not the ideal? Is this not the true standard of perfection we would hold ourselves to if we really truly loved ourselves? This guy's good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what I'm trying to articulate really is that I'm hesitant to begin at all. Hesitant to interrupt the silence of this room. I mean the perfect, unsullied silence that reigns in this room when all of us are elsewhere. That part of me firmly believes that I would give you more value for the not inconsiderable sum you have agreed to pay me, not to mention the use for the week of the company car and, of course, the inestimable services of Ms. Price, for both of which I am extremely grateful. <laughs> that I might serve you better if, rather than attempting to force my thoughts into these crudely absurd vehicles we have come to designate with the laughably inappropriate label words, I were to simply sit in silence for several minutes and then get up and leave the room. Okay, okay, right, but... I mean, isn't the very fact that we have mutually agreed to use the word words to describe words evidence enough of how inappropriate our language truly is? Uh, perhaps if rather than speaking I were to perform a a series of gestures, a, a dance of sorts to the accompaniment of no music but the music of your own perplexed shufflings, grunts, and murmurs. Um, right, right, right. What about the valley fever? Ah, yes. Of course, valley fever, the uh, ostensible subject of this gathering. Did you know that it's caused by a fungus that lives in the ground? We know, we know about the fungus, yes. Coccidioides inventus. And that reports of infection have increased uh, tenfold over the past several years, due largely to increased development in the San Joaquin Valley and other inflicted areas, uh, and, and that uh, over 60% of sufferers show no symptoms at all. That was all covered in my presentation. It, it's been covered, really. Very good. Very good. Which re reminds me yet again of the plague. I am referring, of course, to the famous conclusion in which Camus evokes the eternal threat that the microbes in the very soil will be stirred look, 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 We've all read Camus. I haven't read Camus. Do people still read Camus? He won the fucking Nobel Prize, Terry. So did Henry Kissinger. Oh, oh, hey, she's right. Henry fucking Kissinger. Look, look, look. Whether or not we've read Camus... All I'm saying is he's no Jean-Paul Sartre. Whether or not we've read Camus... And I apologize to those of you who haven't. I certainly didn't mean to hurt your feelings. But what I want to ask is just... Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Has he been vetted? Has he even been given the word association test? Oh, Harry, I really don't think that... Has he, Alex? Did he pass the word association test? Well, that, given the extraordinary the urgency of the compelling, it wasn't deemed, you know, necessary. That's a breach in procedure, Alex. I have a wife, Alex, and three children who have never hurt anyone. What about those eyes closed, Alex? Where are those polar bears supposed to go, huh? I have something to say about Valley Fever. You know, my wife has never hurt anyone either. Uh, Mr. Ford, I'm sensing some concern amongst your colleagues. Uh, potentially legitimate concerns if one insists on viewing things from a certain legalistic standpoint. Uh, I would like to indicate my willingness 
to submit myself to whatever legitimating procedure you normally ask your advisors to undergo. I really don't think that- Alex! We need to do this. Yes, I believe we do. You really don't mind? <laughs> Mr. Ford, please. I survived SEER-administered interrogation resistance training. I think I can handle precisely whatever you folks have in store for me. You underwent SEER training! Of course, I'm a consultant! <laughs> However, Mr. Uh, Cameron? Mr. Cameron, would you be willing to submit to the word association test with me? It's a bit unusual. Unusual times demand unusual measures, Mr. Cameron. It's only fair, Harry. Sure. Fine. Why not? <laughs> good, 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 good. Uh, ben will read the cards. Harry will say the first word that comes into his mind. <laughs> then the consultant will say the first word that comes into his mind. Everyone understand? Uh, and before we begin, I would like to reconfirm that you are all willing to accept the results of this test as evidence of the appropriateness of my being in this room and addressing the collective entity that you all jointly comprise. Yes, totally. Right. Yes. Sure. Good. Proceed. <laughs> ah, butterfly. Balls. Base. Vine. Balls. Cheese. Crackers. Balls. Foot. Shoe. Ball. Beach. Sand. Ball. Meat. Encounter. Ball. Cannon. Artillery. Ball. Testicles. All right, that's enough. Huh. It is agreed then that I passed. Yes. Yes. With Good. fine colors. Thank you. If you will allow me to continue, in fact, I bring you. News. Yes, the situation is not as intractable as your information may have led you to believe. Oh, what do you mean? There's a treatment? A cure? For valley fever? For global warming? First, it is necessary that we stop thinking in terms of treatment and cure. There is no cure for valley fever in the traditional sense. And while there are treatments, in the most severe cases, they are either brutal or ineffective. No treatment, no cure, no vaccine. I thought you were giving us good news. I am in indeed bringing you the best possible news. If you will allow me to direct your attention to this corner of the room, I have brought with me an exhibit, a man who for several years now has been living with Valley Fever. <laughs> About this man! How he even did it? This man! He doesn't show any symptoms. Blue-like symptoms. Chest on muscle pain. Uh, significant weight loss? Uh, difficulty breathing? Night sweat? People, please! Allow me to continue. If I may suggest, we are approaching this from the wrong direction. If I say... I have good news. I deliberately use the word good, not so much in the sense that a good idea is good, but more so in the sense that a good knife is good, or, or a good nap is good. Some years ago, I was in Borneo. I, you were in a Borneo? I, I was in Borneo. Uh, Brunei, to be specific, and I found myself sharing a room with the most extraordinarily annoying individual. His, his dirty <laughs> linens and food wrappers would wind up on my side of the room. He, he made telephone calls at odd hours, he moaned, he slept, he made odd gestures. I must admit, I found myself <laughs> contemplating extreme measures. And then, one day, while my obnoxious roommate was out walking, he was struck by a streetcar, severing his spinal column, and killing him instantly. Oh, that was a thunder! He may have been mauled by an enraged mama bear. I, I can't recall the precise details of the moment. Was it, a, was it a polar bear? Well, would a polar bear be doing in Borneo? Global warming! They can't live on the ice floes anymore! Wait a minute. Why didn't you just change rooms? I still want to hear more about this porno you were in. Yeah. Was it Franny does Fresno? I thought you looked familiar. For God's sake! <laughs> Do people are missing the point? It was a metaphor! Metaphor? God damn it! We don't have time for metaphor! I have a wife, two mistresses, and three 
three children who have never hurt anyone. And, uh, and, and a purebred shih tzu and a 401k. I mean, what kind of a world are we? I'm driving to work every morning in my fucking Prius, and meanwhile it's climate change all over the place, and the ocean levels are rising, and my kids don't have an ice floe to piss in anymore, and the fucking polar bears are showing up in all kinds of bizarre places where they don't belong, and hiding in dark corners, and leaping out at unsuspecting passersby, and tourists, and fuck! Well, you see what is required with respect to all of these things, not just valley fever, but all of it. Global warming, climate change, massive loss of increased biodiversity, interminable and seemingly intractable conflict in the Middle East. What is required with respect to all of these things, not just valley fever, take your pickup catastrophes, that what is required is nothing less and nothing more than reconceptualization. Reconceptualization? Reconceptualization, precisely. A profound and deep conceptual shift. What we in the business of business like to refer to as rebranding. <laughs> rebranding? Rebranding. <gasps> Are you out of your fucking mind? Every fucking catching jar! I assure you, I am not. It's about seeing things in an altered, more congenial light of not allowing one's negative preconceptions to obscure the positive elements of these phenomena. You're gonna rebrand Valley Fever. You're gonna rebrand climate change. We've already begun. <laughs> these things will happen regardless of what we might do. The question is how will we capitalize on it? How will we commodify it? Will we react with fear and distrust as primitive man did to fire? Or will we reach out with open arms and grasp it? Or not, not literally, of course, not with respect to fire. You're gonna rebrand the apocalypse. You can think of it as the apocalypse if you like. I prefer to think of it as an apocalypse opportunity. <laughs> emerging markets? Forget about emerging markets. I'm talking about submerging markets here, folks. Could you give us an example? Uh, certainly. <laughs> Just recently, a U.S. District Court declared the death penalty unconstitutional in California. Now we've got all these inmates we have to kill, but we can't. What does that sound like? A problem? Yeah. No! no! It sounds like an opportunity to me. Send them to the prisons in the San Joaquin Valley! Uh... Help! Let's build some more prisons! We'll let them run around in the yard when the weather's dry and the dust and the spores are getting all kicked up and let our good friend Valley Fever take care of the rest. Capital punishment with no lethal injection by accident. Oops! Oh, that's a clever idea! But is it ethical? Glenn, what the fuck did I tell you about uttering that word in our meeting? Sorry, boss. Don't make me use my paddle. All right, I'm just getting started. Let me ask you this. What is your baseball team called? The Stockton Hearts. Not anymore. From now on, they'll be known as the Stockton Spores. The Stockton Spores. Oh. We're going to have a whole Valley Fever Festival. <laughs> Fungus themed rides and games, and of course, a major network TV spin-off in which a team of plucky yet quite attractive young investigators, each with his or her own distinctive personality quirks, investigates outbreaks of valley fever. We call it CSI Stockton Coxie Spore Investigation. Yeah! <laughs> I'd watch that! <laughs> Of course, a new motto, not just for the team or the festival, but the whole city! 
Valley fever! Oh. Catch it! Oh. That's a cool oh. slogan! You can really catch on! That can totally go viral! Ah, uh, uh, fungal. What? what? It's a fungus, not a virus. Fine. That slogan could totally go fungal! Uh, that's not really a phrase. Actually, it wasn't a phrase until about two weeks ago when I happened to tweet the phrase going fungal and... Uh, and is it catching on? Well, see for yourselves. <laughs> Holy shit! It's gone viral! Fungal! <laughs> it's a disease! You can't, you can't knowingly expose prisoners to it and you can't deal with it with a, with a, with a baseball team at an annual festival. You need medical research and better treatments and well-designed Respectfully, Mr. Cameron, we've run the numbers. I mean, maybe if terrorists or something were behind Valley Fever. If only Al-Qaeda was behind the damn thing, then we could get some real funding. But no, as I've said, We've run the numbers. Altering the public's preconceptions of and feelings about disease is far more cost-effective, truth be told, than traditional research paradigms resulting in cure and, and treatment. But remember, it is as the Bard said. There is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Thinking! Think of the power! Thinking. Anyway, anyway, don't ask me. Ask my patient, our patient, Mr. Patient, sir. So you have been suffering from Valley Fever for quite some time. How? How is it? <laughs> Do you see? Do you see? It's horrible! The random number! And to top it all off, a major new Hollywood motion picture. A love story written by James Franco, who will also direct, play all the male roles, do the electrical maintenance and the catering. A touching story of a young woman played by Anne Hathaway, of course. Oh, contracts valley fever and as the disease <coughs> takes its course <coughs> falls in love with her doctor a fellow sufferer no, no, no. think outside the box she falls in love with the disease itself she loves valley fever that's the kind of paradigm shift we're talking about here folks so uh who plays Valley Fever? Our people are talking to Mark Ruffalo's people. Would you like to hear the theme song? Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Miss Jones. <laughs> Well, we don't care if they don't understand 
Valley fever, you've infected my heart.